Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Timur Krzysztof, and uh, I'm here with uh, my colleagues uh, Adam Savitsky and uh, Friedrich Wok. And uh, we are here to talk to you about uh, game optimization using the Radeon developer tools uh, using RedV uh, and the Steam Deck. So uh, first, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what RedV is, uh, what's a Steam Deck for anyone who hadn't heard of it. Uh, then we are going to give you a brief introduction to what are the Radeon developer tools exactly. And then we are going to show you each tool and uh, what you can do with it. Um, RadV uh, is a Vulkan driver implementation for AMD GPUs, which is community driven. Uh, so this means uh, that it's not officially made by AMD, uh, but rather it's, uh, it's a driver that was written for Linux, uh, mostly by the community. And uh, it does support uh, all current uh, Radeon GPUs, uh, starting with GCN up to the latest ones. Uh, so uh, just to avoid some confusions of what this is and what it isn't, it's not to be confused uh, with the kernel driver, it's not an OpenGL driver, and it's also not an official driver by AMD, although AMD does support us uh, if we need their help. So uh, why do we make this driver? Why don't we use something else? And the reason for that is uh, because we prefer to work with an open development model. So uh, RedV is open source. Uh, it's part of an upstream project called Mesa, which contains uh, many other drivers for Linux. And this means uh, we can share a lot of code uh, with other drivers. Uh, the development process is transparent and uh, it's very flexible. That means if there is a problem, we can fix it. We don't have to rely on other companies or uh, we don't have to rely on the hardware vendor to help us. They sometimes help us, uh, but we can also fix things on our own. Um, the unique features of RedV include a custom shader compiler, which is called ACO. And uh, this compiler is uh, mostly made with gaming in mind. So the main goal here is to be able to compile game shaders as fast as we can. Um, and other than that, uh, our driver supports many Vulkan extensions, which are beneficial for API layering. Uh, and these are not supported by every Vulkan driver. A little bit about the Steam Deck. It looks like this. Uh, it's a handheld PC uh, where you can play your games. And uh, the API situation here, well, everybody knows that uh, most games are written using uh, D3D. Uh, so what we do on the Steam Deck is we translate the DHDD API calls to Vulkan or for older games, uh, OpenGL, uh, using uh, API translation layers. So the result is that uh, most games that run on your Steam Deck use Vulkan, even if they weren't originally written for Vulkan, they will run on the Vulkan driver. Um, let's talk a bit about the radio developer tools. Yeah, so Radeon Developer Tool Suite is a set of free tools from AMD that you can download from our website, gpopen.com, and uh, that support just AMD GPUs, but multiple operating systems, not only Steam Deck, but also Windows, Linux, and multiple modern graphics APIs like Vulkan, DX12, and others. And uh, they, those tools connect directly to the graphics drivers, so they are very low level. They can give you much more information that you could capture just on the level of the graphics API, like RenderDog does, for example. Radeon GPU Profiler, one of those tools, is intended for capturing a single render frame of your game, and um, it captures um, very precise low-level timing information about every draw call. It doesn't capture the contents of your textures or meshes, so unlike RenderDog, it is not a debugging tool. But what you have instead is a timeline where you can see how everything executes on the GPU very precisely. Your draw calls, your barriers, your context switches and stuff like that, even the execution of individual shader instructions, of course, in the eyesight, the low level assembly and how much time they take. Here is the screenshot, but we will show you a live demo. So, um... It doesn't come for free. Uh, you need to uh, spend some work on integrating this with your driver. 
so uh, what the driver needs to do here is uh, there is this hardware block in the GPU, which is called SQTT and SPM. So we need to enable this hardware block, let it capture the data, uh, and then we have to copy that data to a file and make a capture out of that. Um, so how do you use this? If you develop a game for the Steam Deck, uh, we have this uh, very handy uh, Steam of the, uh, SteamOS DevKit client. So in this client, uh, you have a button that takes a capture, and that's it. Uh, if you don't use this client, or you just want to develop on Linux, uh, we have two options for you. Uh, either uh, you have to cap you so either you can capture a specific frame in the game or you can capture any frame uh, by writing something to a file that triggers capturing a trace. And for these, you have to set uh, those environment variables there. So we are not going to demonstrate how to take a capture, uh, but we're going to demonstrate uh, how it looks like once you have it. So this was taken from the game Aperture Desk Job, uh, which is a Valve game for the Steam Deck. Adam? Yeah, so we have multiple tabs here, but this tab is probably the most important. We have the timeline of our frame, and the graph on the top is uh, occupancy, wave occupancy. So how busy is the GPU executing some work? The more, the better. Above the axis, we can see the graphics queue, and below the axis, we have async compute running in parallel. We can change the different coloring modes, but by default, anything that's blue is a pixel shader, anything green is a vertex shader, and anything yellow is a compute shader. And in the bottom part, we can see individual draw calls, which we can like zoom in, for example, and see um, how they execute, like how much time they take. When we select one draw call, we can see on the right the details, like how many threads were spawned, but also we can see the occupancy, for example, like whether we run with the maximum occupancy of 16 or not, and whether the occupancy is limited by the number of VGPRs or registers allocated, for example. So let's say that you have a game. Your game is slow. You want to figure out what's happening. So you take this capture, you go to event timing, where you see uh, a tree of every API call that you have, and you see how, many, how much time each takes. So you can identify uh, which one takes the longest. And let's say we want to look at this one. So you have this uh, draw call here, which takes a lot of time. So let's say you want to figure out what's happening here. So what you can do is you can look at the shader disassembly for this. You can see uh, the shader ISA that is generated. And uh, you can see uh, which instruction takes how long. Yeah, those instructions, um, usually in our assembly, the I.O. and load or store is asynchronous. So you um, request a load, and then you can do some more maths, and you have to wait for the result when you really need it. So you normally see those weights as the instructions that take most of the time. And this red bar means the latency of this instruction that could not be hidden by overlapping some more work on the GPU. And the uh, green part is the latency that was actually hidden by some other work. There is also the pipeline state tab, where you can see the stages of the graphics pipeline, like in render doc. And you can see how the pipeline was configured. But also, it includes some low-level information, like, for example, uh, how many registers were allocated for that um, shader, and whether the occupancy is limited by the number of registers allocated. In this case, it is not. So uh, that's enough about RGP. Um, let's get back to our presentation and uh, let's talk about RRA. Yeah, the ray tracing analyzer or RRA is a ray tracing debugging and profiling tool which visualizes your acceleration structures, which on AMD hardware are always BVHs or bounding volume hierarchies. It also features a traversal counter heat map which shows which part of your ray tracing scene takes the longest to traverse, which helps you figure out which spots in your ray tracing scene are the most problematic for performance. You can also debug ray tracing issues like missing objects in the acceleration structure using RRA. This is how RRA usually looks. 
This is a TLS view or top level acceleration structure view, which contains an entire ray tracing scene. But we can also switch to a BLAS view or bottom level acceleration structure view to analyze a specific object in more detail. RedV integrates with RA by capturing all the BVH data in the hardware format that is also used for the ray tracing. But there are a few minor differences in the BVH format between RedV and between the official AMD drivers. So what RedV has to do is convert the BVH data from RedV's format to the format that the official AMD drivers use. For that, when the application requests to build some acceleration structures, RedV first copies the BVH data to a temporary CPU buffer and then converts the data on CPU while it is being written to the file. This functionality was added in Mesa 22.3, so if you want to use any RA tracing functionality, make sure you're on that version or a newer one. You can use RA similarly to RGP. However, as of now, there's no SteamOS DevKit client support, so you always have to use the environment variables. There's another optional environment variable that you can use to verify the, that the internal BVH data is all correct when you uh, capture the trace and it'll verify all the integrity of the BVHs while converting them to the AMD driver format. I'm now going to show a quick demo of RA and for that I captured two traces of everyone's favorite scene, the sponsor trace. And the first trace has all the geometry uh, not rotated at, at all. And the second trace, which is here, has all the geometry rotated by 45 degrees. Now, if we enable the traversal counters in both of those uh, scenes, we can see that in the trace with the non-rotated scene, uh, the geometry is mostly efficient to traverse. We can see that at the edges of the scene, there's mostly a blue color, which means that there are very few traverse operations for those rays, and the traverse is uh, therefore pretty efficient. But if we look at the traversal counters for the other geometry here, we can see that there's a lot of uh, red uh, areas, which means that in those areas, the performance is especially bad, which means the ray tracing operations take longer and reduce your frame rate. We can also see those issues if we switch to the BLAS view, which will, in this case, show a relatively well-aligned uh, bounding box, which means that the geometry fits pretty smoothly into the um, bounding box and not much space is wasted. If we look at the BLS view for the other trace, we can see that there's a lot of space wasted, and uh, especially to the edges here, there's a uh, space that could potentially uh, just be re reduced, which would make traversal more efficient, because especially when you pack a lot of those geometries in a closed space together, the bounding boxes of all of those geometries overlap, which means the driver has to check each single bounding box every time a ray passes through the general area of that trace, which causes the uh, tracing inefficiency that you can see. With that, let's get back to the presentation and uh, go to the next tool, the Radeon Memory Visualizer. Yeah, so Radeon Memory Visualizer captures not a single frame, but the entire game session in the aspect of memory consumption. So it tracks every allocation and the allocation of an image or a buffer, and you can see them, how much space they occupy. Uh, again, it connects to the lower level graphics driver. So it shows you also the implicit resources that you don't allocate on your own, like uh, descriptor sets or swap chain images or pipelines and how much memory they occupy. Here is how it looks like, but again, we will show you a live demo in a moment. First, we say how to connect it with RADV. RedV captures RMB trace data in mainly two different ways. All the resource events like allocation, deallocation, or CPU maps are captured inside RedV itself on the user mode side, but RedV also enables kernel driver instrumentation for memory residency events. This means that the kernel driver writes each page table update from the GPU to a specific ring buffer, which RedV can then read. Then RedV attributes each of these updates to a specific resource which helps RMV figure out whether that resource was placed in VRAM or in system RAM by the kernel. The ring buffer was added in Linux 5.10, and the RMV tracing was added to RedV in Mesa 23.0. So you need both of those if you want to do RMV tracing. Again, RMV tracing usage is similar to RA in that there's no dev kit support as of now, and you always have to use the environment variables. 
But before you do any tracing, you also have to initialize the kernel ring buffer by executing a setup script that is shipped with the Radeon developer tool suite. With that, let's get to the demo and show you how to use Radeon Memory Analyzer. I've made a trace also of Apache Desktop with two snapshots. And uh, first, you can see in the timeline view that uh, the memory consumption of the app was initially low. That was when we were in the main menu and not much resources were allocated. And as we started to load in the game, there were uh, more and more resources allocated and resource consumption just keeps growing until we are in game and the resource consumption is relatively stable minus some resources being streamed in or out. If we now click on the snapshot here, we'll be taken to the snapshot view, which shows the overall memory consumption at that point split by the GPU heaps. Yeah, so the local heap means obviously the GPU local memory, so VRAM, and the host means the system memory. We can see how much is requested, bound, and committed. Um, in other tabs, we can see the nice view of all our resources. We can, again, set the different uh, coloring modes, different grouping, and different sorting, so many options to visualize. And we can see each of those memory blocks and individual resources here, their sizes, they, their types. Also, we could see their names if they were given through the debug utils extension. We, we have another view where we see individual allocations sorted and we can preview what's inside. Like we find one of those and we can double click or rather right click and how was it like? Oh, okay, so maybe just go to the resource list and yeah, and here we can see the list of resources and their parameters. We can select an individual one and see what was its name, what was the size, and also how much is actually committed to local and committed to host memory. We can also view details of all of those resources. For example, if we click on this resource, we'll be taken to the uh, more detailed resource view. This resource here is a command buffer, and we can see that uh, the embedded size here uh, for uh, data that is associated with the command buffer is 16 kilobytes. Uh, at, at the moment, uh, command buffers that contain executable data will not be locked. There's uh, minor architectural differences in the AMD driver where all of those uh, memory objects are packed into one command buffer object, whereas RADV splits them into separate ones. But we can also visualize other uh, resource type, like, for example, this texture here. And then we can see that the texture is, for example, a 2D image with 64 by 64 pixels and with a 16-bit float uh, image format. We can also see that the image size is 64 kilobytes and it always needs to be aligned to 4 kilobytes in memory. We can also compare two different snapshots if we go back to the timeline view and select both of the snapshots I made and click on the Compare Snapshots button. Then we can see that we are now comparing uh, the memory consumption of the app in both of those snapshots. We can see that, uh, as we expect, the app has allocated a lot more memory in between those snapshots. And we can also see that most of that memory was allocated in the VRAM heap, which was almost or even a little bit more than a gigabyte and only about two megabytes in the system RAM heap. We can also list all of those resources that were allocated or freed between those snapshots by listing the resources that are unique to a specific snapshot. For example, if we list the resources that are unique to the later snapshot, it will only show resources that were allocated between the earlier snapshot and the later snapshot. We can also do the reverse. We can show resources that were freed in between those snapshots by selecting the resources that are unique to the earlier snapshot. Now we also show the resources that were freed in between those two snapshots. With that, this concludes the RMV demo. Let's get back to the presentation. Maybe show what would happen if, if uh, we had a memory leak in the application. Well, if we had a memory leak, uh, those resources would, uh, let's say, for example, that uh, we actually want the resource consumption from here to be stable. And uh, those resources here uh, assumed they were leaked. Then we could uh, create another snapshot. in here by adding another snapshot and comparing the latest snapshot and that snapshot. 
we now click on compare snapshots and go to the memory leak finder. We can list only the resources that are unique to the second snapshot. And if we were capturing a scenario where the resource usage just keeps growing and uh, there's seemingly no end to it, we would uh, see all the resources that were allocated in between those uh, things and basically just see the resources that uh, contribute to this growing resource usage while filtering out all the resources that were there anyway and uh, that we don't really care about when trying to diagnose the memory leak. With that, let's get to the next slide. We'd like to give our thanks to both the AMD people who worked on those tools as well as the Radvi team. The names are listed on the screen right now. So th thanks for everyone who worked on our driver and also thanks for everyone who supported us uh, from AMD. And uh, with that, uh, that was what we wanted to share. Is there any question? Uh, no, that's uh, not possible because uh, Red V uh, decides whether it needs to capture a trace or not uh, when the queue present function is called. So you will need to actually have a snap swap chain allocated and present from it in order to uh, trigger any kind of capture. Yeah, that's right. All those tools uh, rely on the present call to identify render frames. Um, device loss debugging. Can you the uh, I, I understood it. Uh, device yeah, loss debugging the, using. The uh, uh, yeah. So the question was whether uh, device loss debugging uh, using something like Aftermath is supported. Uh, there are some debugging uh, utilities to diagnose uh, GPU hangs in some cases where we have uh, special environment variables that trigger uh, dumping internal information related uh, to the hang but uh, we don't uh, currently export any aftermath information. Yeah, and if you ask about uh, not just Steam Deck, but <coughs> sorry, also the PC, we have the custom AMD extensions to Vulkan uh, that allows you to write marker to a memory and uh, another extension that exposes new memory types that are device coherent and device uncached, which makes those writes more reliable. And with them, you can write your own system of breadcrumb markers that you write between draw calls that gives you the idea where the device hang in your frame. That's the best you can do right now. Fortunately, we don't offer any tool that would help in, in debugging those crashes, but uh, we are aware that's a big problem and every developer is asking for, for such tools. So yeah, we will see what we can do. Um, I was going to ask a ray tracing question, but I kind of changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, all right. Okay. Any other questions? If not, uh, thanks for your attention. <laughs>